Spiders have been here since the beginning of time. We have watched the sea levels rise and fall. We live amongst the supernaturals. They've taught us many things. We are an island people. We are an ocean-born people. The waters are our roadways. Our intimate relationship with Haida Gwaii is based off of Yakudan. Respect. I'm Matea Olin and I am a surfer from Tofino, Canada. Funny enough, I was actually born in Camwell, Alberta, so I'm a mountain girl at heart. But when I was about half a year old, we moved to Tofino right here. Cart Bay is our backyard, so I grew up with the ocean as like my home. So in a few days, me and Paige are gonna be going to Haida Gwaii and hopefully score some insane waves when we're there and experience the community and the culture. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, except that I was going on a trip with Matea, and that made me super excited. I feel like she's the little sister that I never had, and just the way that we can kind of like get on and communicate with each other, it's pretty unique. Here in Tofino, we are designing three incredible surfboards to hide a guai and gift them to the community. The boards are going to get painted on by a few local artists. And hopefully from Stefan's magic in the shaping room to this beautiful art, it's gonna become the perfect board. I often refer to the process of building a surfboard as uh, like big kid arts and crafts. The shaping process, that is quite almost therapeutic in some ways. It's um, singular focus and, and zen-like. Never before have I been there and witnessed like the blank getting cut and then him going into the sanding room and finishing it off by hand. Every board rides completely different when you take it in the ocean. Everything Stefan tunes with the rocker and the rail makes a huge difference on how they feel in the water. The idea of going to a remote location where you know that you're going to get to surf waves with only a few people out, I'm excited. I hope we find some perfect peelers where I can push my limits, and I hope we also find some barely ways. I really want to work on my barrel riding a lot. Hey, how you doing? Hey, nice to meet you. Wallaga, nice to meet you too. Matea, Wallaga. Wallaga is a complete legend. He's like the perfect guy to have here showing us around. Ne Kun is one of the sacred birthplaces of our people. Riding waves in this new way is rad. It's a beautiful coalescing of our cultural traditions and modern craft. I Look can't at these wait conditions. for all my boards to come and like have a proper wedding. <laughs> Got here to Haida Gwaii. I was super excited, never been here before. And we're loading everything in the car. I'm like, I'm gonna go back and get my boards. And I walk back and there's nothing. I was so lucky that I got to use Pete's wetsuit and board and we ended up going and finding some really fun ways. wetsuit, booties, gloves, hood. It's been probably some of the coldest waters that I've ever surfed in. You walk down to the beach and there's literally nobody. It's just perfect waves rolling in everywhere you can look. Coming here, I've only like ridden a few waves of barrels, but I <laughs> tried my best to stall and attempt getting under it, but I'm not so good at figuring out how to come out. It was an honor having Paige and Matea surfing here. It was the first time in history having two female surfers of their caliber riding Haida Gwaii's waves.
I'm John Bennett. Uh, my hide name is Ty Hagen. My father was a boat builder, and when he was going to make the model for the first boat, he went to his old uncle's set, and he asked him, he said, how did they make these ocean-going canoes? They were such wonderful sea boats. And his old uncles told him, he said, uh, what they did was they kept the bottoms as straight as they could fore and aft, and they were slightly concave in the middle here. The keel came down, it's called rocker, it might go down maybe four, four to six inches here. It gave them more maneuverability, they were able to turn. So when they're hunting, they could, they could stay on their animals like the, the fur seals or the sea otters. They evolved into this flare bit because when you're riding or bucking into the waves or even riding when the sea hits, you know, your your dive, the bow part's diving down, but as it gets wider, it gives it more, more lift in the, the front. The Haida Warrior, which was Jeff Weisbold, he was my uncle. He was one of the first ones that came up with this. I grew up around surfboard builders and um, it's a very similar process in the curvature and the design and when you were talking about like the displacement hole in the nose and how you know it would kind of push water aside and it's pretty cool now the big wave boards that I'm using are very similar they're paddlers before they're a surfboard to like look at all these canoes and look at how they were built and all the reasons they were built to like glide in the water and the bow flare and everything to just make the canoe one with the ocean and yeah you come here and not just is it just beautiful by nature but all the stories and people and canoes and totem poles they're all just have so much meaning and carry so much history and beauty in them. Guay is a stunning archipelago off Canada's west coast. It's rich in biodiversity and cultural history. It's a powerful place. You can feel it. Surfing or riding waves in this new way began here not so long ago. To a wave rider, Haida Gwaii holds much wonder and intrigue, and with that comes respect and responsibility. Uh, my name is uh, Christian White. Uh, Kit Kulans is my Haida name. Uh, I was inspired by my father uh, carving in argillite, and then later on he carved in silver and gold. By the mid 80s, he uh, got interested in carving canoes. It's pretty well a lost art. The last one that was carved was about 1935. And then there was another one, a smaller one, done in 71. Then my father carved this one, started in 1985. Hoot Aju, we call it, uh, the seal hunter. Of course, the seal hunter is uh, the killer whale. And up in the front, we have a, a little uh, lookout, like a little watchman type figure looking out ahead of us. We dressed up the boards reflecting our canoe legacy. It was remarkable watching our youth receive these amazing gifts. The boards now live in the youth center in our village. They start uh, recognizing you know, like trees known as CMTs, culturally modified trees. They show uh, all the different steps of building the canoe. Now we could see those in the woods, uh, the remnants of them. This is a, a wonderful example of of uh, what it takes to create a canoe, the process of, of, of falling the tree, uh, working on the canoe out in the woods, and then of course the, the long journey out to the ocean. This is actually the, the bow. This is the prow of the clue of the canoe. And along here, you see the, the gunnel line or the shear line, what will be the shear line. 
the displacement holes in the front of the bow and how it pushes water and how it moves quickly through the water and how you can navigate the ocean and the rockers. I mean, it all correlates the same um, language as surfboard technology. This is my first time I've ever done a filming trip and getting to go up there and surf uncrowded waves with an amazing crew was incredible and was a memory I'll have forever. Every major rock, every bay, every reef, every point, every island, everything has a hiding name. These waters shaped us, they birthed us. Take five.